Rorschach. I yeah, know. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I was, I was feeling, I was feeling the ooze, but I, I successfully kept it back somewhat. But here's, here's a question that I've heard for years, not so much only about apostles, but about any gift, mm -hmm. because anyone can self-proclaim something, right? Of any gift. Mm -hmm. The issue is this: Who is the one distributing the gifts? Who is that one? It's the Amen. Spirit of God. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. the one. Now, yeah. how do we know that one is not self-proclaiming that the Spirit has told them something? Confirmation. We talked about Acts chapter 13. The Spirit himself, by prophetic, mm -hmm. said, separate for me Barnabas and Paul for the work that I have chosen for them. Mm -hmm. and, and so there were witnesses there that heard, and then everything that followed bore witness to what was said. Jesus said in one place, wisdom is justified of her children. Mm -hmm. If it's really so, you will see after time that it was so. But Acts, uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 1. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. If, if you believe that you're an evangelist, if you believe that you have the gift of prophecy, if you believe you're an apostle, God makes it his own responsibility to say it once twice, thrice, and multiple times so that you can stand in it when there is trouble. I heard your son saying recently, Amadi Williams, that if you do not hear God say something, that as soon as trouble comes, you withdraw from it. And God knows to make sure that you know that you know that you know by confirmation. Because trouble, it, Jesus himself said, the rain is coming on the just and the unjust. Mm -hmm. Trouble mm -hmm. comes. Mm -hmm. Well, if you know that you know that you know, when trouble comes, it doesn't shake you about who you are at all. So, excuse my excitement if it came off clearly, <laughs> but literally the spirit is the one who lets us know who's who. Mm. And then he confirms it multiple times, usually through sources that don't even know one another. Right so as to make this point so clear and true that it's undeniable. Wow, that's good, that's Amen. good. Amen. Amen. I always say Amen. to myself that you will never find out the DNA that God put in you by yourself. Surely. You know, you may have, you may be doing something I don't even recognize. A lot, of, a lot of times I realize that when people are called to a particular gift, they do it. And they don't right. even recognize they're doing it. Right. So, you come and affirm then anything, they say, oh, yeah, that's right. I am doing those things. You know, I, I, that's why I feel the way I feel in my heart about chaos, you know. I just can't deal with, you know, there's points where I just got to go arrange things because, you know, Amen. it's out of order. I just yeah, yeah. put the cup where it's supposed to be and, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, and the fork in the right container because that right. administration comes out or, you know, you just, they just in them. And mm -hmm. a lot of times mm -hmm. you just look and you say, oh, man, this is this person, Grace. You can just see the grace shining forth. Did you want to add something to uh, that, Brian? Uh, I, I was thinking the same scripture verse from Acts 13. Mm -hmm. And again, just how, you know, the, the prophets and, and the teachers were gathering together in mm -hmm. time of prayer, prayer and fasting. And the Holy Spirit said, set aside. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there, there was a group of prophets and teachers there and, you know, they were spending time in some you know, practical disciplines within the Lord and the Holy Spirit spoke. Mm -hmm. And I think also what you probably saw was, was Ernest was saying, and, and I think you're talking too, was that you could see that these guys were, were functioning in a, in a certain aspect of, of bringing order as well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just, um, you know, let's set these titles and just place these titles upon these men. Uh, I think the Holy Spirit, uh, the, I, I think the function mm -hmm. of the apostle was probably evident in mm -hmm. these men's lives. Mm -hmm. And it came to a point in time when the Holy Spirit says, now mm -hmm. I'm commissioning them as an apostle. And they will do the work as an apostle and be known for that work. Right. Um, not critical. necessarily as far as the apostle title, yes. but the work thereof. And, and that's, that's what, what you really look for. I mean, people say I'm a prophet or whatever. And there's certain things that I, that I tend to look for. And there's certain things that, you know, you just tend to, to look mm -hmm. for as, as far as the overall functioning mm -hmm. that goes, goes with that title. And so I, I, I think it's, um, that's very true and very critical. Right. That's good. Mark, do you want to add something to that? Um, still highlighting the words relational. Mm -hmm. That keeps coming up again and again. Hallmark of the kingdom. Although Ernest gave an example of 
the Lord confirming through unknowns, but also the relational of mm -hmm. the example of in Acts 13. Mm -hmm. There were people knowing each other and confirming. Um, and then the other uh, piece, if I can recall, um, the, the fruit. Uh, an individual, I think, gets a sense of, I can be a citizen in the kingdom. I can do this thing. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're the fruit of the apostles' work. Paul talked about um, Timothy, and, and he talked about, um, you are my son here, and the things that uh, you, you represent my labor. You, and he has birthed them into existence. So there's this fruit that, that just also shows the proof in the pudding that this individual is, uh, is an apostle, and, and that you see the evidence of it through those who relate to them, and those who are gone, and also begin to father themselves, mm. because I believe that's what the Lord is looking for. Amen. Amen. There was something critical that Brian said that, uh, about timing. Um, Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, the Lord says of Jeremiah, mm -hmm. that I knew you mm -hmm. when you were in your mother's belly and ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. But he was not released into that role the moment he came forth from the matrix, as the King, <laughs> as right. the king James right. would say. That gift was present, but there was a time for when it was to be recognized and he was to be released in it. Yes. And what Brian was saying is that, you know, when you, re when you look at Acts 13, the group that's assembled, they're, they're, it's stated that it's his prophets and teachers. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul was amongst them. Mm -hmm. He was either recognized as a prophet or a teacher or both, mm -hmm. as was Barnabas. Mm -hmm. That's what, up to that time, that's what they were released to act as. Mm -hmm. At that point, mm -hmm. the point where the Spirit spoke that day, they were released to function in this other grace. Right. It is critical, it is critical that we live as family, that we live as family, and that people are being matured so they will have the confidence to say that it's your time to act this way. Right. If we, if everything is congregational and everything is distant, we won't hear those words and people mm -hmm. won't act in their time. Well, well timing mm -hmm. is definitely a key. I've never seen anybody call that didn't go through a process. Before Amen. You actually saw the timing of the Lord, you know, sort of acknowledge. Yes. You know, God tells us a lot of things about ourselves, but I think that a lot of times when we interpret it, that's supposed to happen the next day. You know, and the Lord says, you, you know, you're a prophet <laughs> to the nation. You start basically calling, you know, Japan and, you know, the next day, instead of understanding that when the Lord told these people, like you said, for Jeremiah, when the Lord shared with them, you know, what he had called them to be, there's a tremendous process that they had to go through. I look at David's life and I'm like, my goodness, you know, he really went through a process. Sure. You know, he had to be faithful in the cave before he even, mm -hmm. you know, became to the throne. Mm -hmm. You know, he had to learn how to deal with disgruntled and people in debt, you yeah. know, and basically yeah. people who are wounded. Yeah. Yeah. And so God uses, uses <laughs> our everyday life situations, you know, and when we're at work, God is using that. Sure. But, you know, Amen. this mentality, <laughs> we just have this mentality that, you know, this is ministry over here, but I got to do yeah. this to survive. Instead of looking at ministry as your life, mm -hmm. you know, your ministry is your yeah. life. You know, your calling is present no matter where you go. My, my calling is not when I get to a, mm -hmm. you know, behind four, four walls in a place called Church of whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, my calling is present whether I'm at the post office, jogging, you know, smacking the bird out the tree, mm -hmm. you know, because you keep eating stuff you're not supposed to. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's always present, you know, no matter where, because it's who we are. You know, it's a part of who we are. Amen. It's a DNA of, of which God has allowed us to function. And I heard you guys saying that word quite a bit, function. Yes. You know, explain, because I know we are, we're almost uh, out of time here, but explain to me and our listeners how we can't look at these callings as nouns or titles, but how these are actual functions. I recall reading how in AD 33, a minister used to be a verb, and it became a noun in AD 33. It became who you are instead of something you did. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. how do we get to a point of uh, of allowing the enemy to disengage us by giving us titles that, you know, that doesn't have function to them? Well, if, if you see these these gifts as titles, 
you will try to funnel all of your life and activity into your definition of them Amen. rather than being yourself and mm -hmm. letting what the function is work through you mm -hmm. in the way that it's intended to work through you. That's right. Different administrations, the same gift. Yes, you want to add to that, Brian? You were saying you would confirm that's right. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know we're just, you know, there, there's the saying that there are uh, no two snowflakes are exactly the same. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so the Lord has created us, all of us, differently. And God loves diversity. Mm -hmm. Now, his, his gifts and his, and his offices can function. But as Ernest was saying, he wants to function through the diversity of who we are mm -hmm. and for it to be put on full display mm -hmm. uh, in heaven and on earth in, in that manner. Um, and, and I know there's times where when, when dealing with, with the prophetic in my life that there were other people who I saw who were very prophetic Mm -hmm. and at times I almost model myself after them. And so that, that's a real trap we have, we have to be aware of. And you know, part of it is, like Ernest said, you, just, you have to be who you are mm. because there's, there's a, a transparency there uh, that the Lord can use or um, he, he, he can reveal a real purity through. Amen. And it becomes very pure. You know, so um, as, if we can remove that taint, of, well, if I'm an apostle, then I got to act like this, dress <laughs> like that. I got to take this appearance. Mm -hmm. It's all show and tell. Right. And don't forget your cross in your yes. right pocket. <laughs> yeah. Got to have your cross in your right pocket. Or is that the left? It's the left. <laughs> it's the left, actually. I'm sorry. That was funny. I think that, uh, well, you, you, um, you put me through the crucible as a new person of giving a little bit about myself. And I said I have four sons. One thing the Lord showed me with regards to them is... Um, they are a Bradley without trying. Mm -hmm. They just are. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they can do that's going to make them any more a Bradley. They just being. Right. And, um, and I get to see how each one of them has different personalities mm -hmm. and they sure. feel just fine. Sure. Right. So yeah. just relaxing in that right. is comforting for me. Amen. That's good. That's Amen. good. So, and that's another thing. I think a lot of times we think of when we think about apostle, we think that's who we are. Uh. You know, instead of a function, we with Equate that with our identity, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, and there's definitely a great distinction there. One of the things you bring out, Mark, is that uh, while we may be called to do something, that's not who we are. Amen. You know, we are all sons of God. Amen. And, Amen. and that's where our identity derives from. That's right. That we're directly connected to our Father. Yes. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. We're, we're entering. We're almost out of time here, but I really appreciate you coming tonight and sharing along this line of um, elders and apostles. So we're going to pick up from here. And because what I would like to do is go through each one of these ministry gifts and talk about it from the perspective of which God has shown us from the model that we're presenting here. Amen. So I appreciate you, Ernest. Thank you Good. so much for coming tonight, Mark. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming Thanks. tonight. And Brian, thank you. Thank you. I'm Dana Thompson. Thank you for watching the Apostolic Forum. Please tune in to our next broadcast.